Well, there is a race against time right now. This submarine, oh, submersible, I should say, sorry, um, attached to a a, 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 a tugboat uh, on basically miles and miles out to sea from Newfoundland in Canada. Uh, it went down at four o'clock on Sunday morning with up to 96 hours of air, even just for an eight-hour journey, basically to the bottom of the ocean, 12,500 feet down where the Titanic is sitting at the bottom of the Atlantic. Uh, spent a little bit of time there and then to come back up again. Five adventurers were on board, including British billionaire Hamish Harding. Uh, there were two crew, uh, three tourists. They paid £250,000 each uh, for this journey. However, very shortly into this trip, an hour and 45 minutes into the eight-hour mission, uh, contact was lost with the craft. Uh, there is now a frantic uh, bid to try and locate the craft uh, and to, to hopefully retrieve the craft, which, as of about now, is believed to have only 54 hours of air left. That's assuming everyone on board is still OK. Well, let's talk about this someone who, well, knows exactly uh, what will be involved in this. Rear Admiral Roger Lane Knott. Uh, he is a former flag officer for Submarines UK, a part of the Royal Navy, and a former NATO commander of submarines. Good morning to you, Rear Admiral. Good morning, Julia. Thank you very much indeed. Now, we're often searching for experts on this show on, on various different topics. It's very rare we need an expert on how we would get a submersible back up from uh, 12,500 feet down. Um, and we are so grateful for your time and your expertise, sir. Um, can you just tell us, first of all, your reaction when you heard about this story? Um, I suppose I was um, a bit horrified and I was actually... I thought to myself, here we go again, because there's been precedent to this, uh, not only with the Kursk one back here in Russia, and that was only at sort of 300 feet. Yeah. It wasn't at this depth at all. And of course, you may recall the Piskies with Roger Chapman uh, back, it must be 15 or years, 20 years ago, I suppose now, and the saga that that was, they did get him out. Yeah. But it's, it, it's, um, it, 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 it's very concerning. The fact of the matter is, this submarine, wherever it is, and nobody really knows that, is it on the surface? Is it underneath? Is, is it, um, uh, uh, you know, involved with the actual Titanic itself? Uh, the problem with currents in that area, you've got the Labrador current coming down from the north and the Gulf Stream coming up from the Florida way, and they interact there, and there's a huge uh, mix of currents going in different directions. So to try and predict where anything is, is extremely difficult. Yeah, and this and that, this submarine is. I mean, the submersible. It's tiny. I mean, it's really tiny. Yeah, We're thinking well, about the, the wreck of the Titanic. You know, it took sixty years to find that, and that is a huge, 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 big ocean liner lying on the bottom of the, the Atlantic. But you, so you mentioned the currents. It's also, of course, it's pitch dark. It's absolutely pitch dark, and you you have to remember this thing is only about twenty tons. Uh, it's quite small. I mean, very small, um, uh, and uh, as a result of which. Um, the, the actual problem of trying to find it, certainly if it's submerged, is extremely difficult because the, the issue is that there's no um, umbilical cam cable from the mothership for communications because they're going too deep. You yeah. couldn't possibly have an umbilical table that went down 12, 13,000 feet. So that, that's a particular issue. Yeah. And their, their system that they use is one of, it's a sort of, modified sonar of pings and 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 text messages by by noise if you like um what i find astonishing about it is that it, it's supposed to take two hours to go down to the titanic uh they, they drop it that thing drops at about 50 meters a minute and uh, when they lost communication at one hour 45 if i'd been in that submarine i think i would have started to come up if i was able to yeah. You know, and I would have I would have surfaced. They have a facility to service to, to surface, but I don't know whether it's working or not. They've got um, tanks with uh, with um, lots of um, uh, air in it, so they could do that. Uh, they could have had all forms of um, mechanical and electrical failure. Remembering this is run by batteries. It's got two thrusters, and not much else than that. Uh, in fact, it's operated by a joystick, like you use yeah. on. YouTube or a game, which is extraordinary, really, for a, a vessel that's supposed to be so sophisticated. Yeah. So I, I think trying to find it, it, it will have to be a mixture of surface craft with um, sonar, 
uh, maritime aircraft dropping sonar boys trying to listen for anything if there's anything to hear and we don't know that and, and that's all. the crucial thing we don't know whether they're they are still alive and you say or whether at the surface or where they are down below but this is it so they would have been if everything was going to plan they would have been pretty far down pretty much approaching uh, the Titanic, the actual, uh, the wreckage. There were, you mentioned there in touch that there is some concern that maybe they got you know, caught up with the wreckage somehow and unable to surface. Um, if they were able to identify uh, where this sub is, and let's say it, you know, I mean, the best case scenario is that it surfaced somewhere in the Atlantic. Um, and again, we're, we're talking about, you know, even if there were no currents being 350 miles off the coast of Newfoundland, so at a pretty big area to search. But let's say they were able to be found. That's our best case scenario. If they were able to be found and they were actually at the bottom of, of the Atlantic near the, the wreck, and let's say they were found there, what would be the process for getting them back? Would it just be literally sort of attaching a chain and a rope and and pulling well, them up? What else? What, what would they do? Well, the reality is that there is no rescue submarine that is cap in the world that's capable of doing this. The American uh, rescue submarines and the British ones, and the French have some as well, and the Chinese have some too. The Chinese haven't gone down this far I I with a rescue submarine. And if how are they going to rescue it? There's no way. All the rescue submarines in the world are designed to latch on to a nuclear submarine or a submarine that's on the bottom, so they are attached to the hatch. They've got no capability of doing this at all. So right. trying to latch it or things. So the only real option they've got at the moment, if they do find it, maybe loitering or just stock somewhere, uh, not quite at the bottom, is to send down a, a robotic one, which is an unmanned submersible, which does have claws and grabbers, and I mean, I suppose it's feasible that that could grab it and start pulling it to the surface. So, quick, I mean, this is this thing weighs about ten tons, so yeah. it's not light. When it, but in the water, it would be much easier. But I think um, I, I think that's a remote possibility. I know from what I've read that the Americans have already started to uh, get their submersible there if they can help. But I don't think it will. It's just too deep. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is the, the thing. These, this is an extraordinary you know, feat if they can achieve it. But again, even if they can find it, you're saying there aren't there aren't that many hopes if it if it is so deep in the ocean as opposed to somewhere on the surface. We know that um, various different government coast guards have been involved. We're assuming the U.S. and the Canadians, the British uh, Ministry of Defence, have been informed, but uh, they and they have not been asked sort of for help at the current time. We also know that uh, according to the the company that of course uh, uh, own this Ocean Gate, and in fact it's their chief executive is also on board this up, that they're getting other commercial deep dive operators. That they are, they are coming in. They're help. They're helping. I mean, this is the, we, my, my 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 guest here, Tom Sater, mentioned the the Thai cave rescue, and of course that was something that gripped the nation a few years back. For weeks, I think it was two weeks, they were trapped, uh, and, and all these different bids and you know, like Elon Musk sending some sort of little mini sub, which ended up not being used, and all the different methods they were using. This is a completely different kind of rescue, isn't it? Because of the depths and because of the sheer scale of the Atlantic Ocean and the, 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 the race against time for them to... We've got to find these men within, well, as of 7 o'clock, we think 54 hours because they're... Well, I, I, I reckon... It, I rec yeah, it's... it's, it's uh, I reckon they've probably got 48. Give them, give them a benefit of the doubt and say 54. Yeah. But, you know, that, 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 that air will be running out and, that, and that's the problem. And the reality of it is that I don't think there's uh, it, the only thing they could do if they are able to pinpoint where it is through sonar with maritime air or surface ships. Uh, another nuclear submarine going in there is a possibility. We're using its sonar, but it, it, if it's lost all its power, then you're not going to hear anything. You know, so uh, there's only two thrusters with batteries that run it, and they've got no other facilities. Yeah. And so, consequently, try, if they let's say they do find it, then actually recovering it is a whole new ball game, yeah. frankly. And, and recovering and it think, and recovering it in time for people to still be well, alive. Can I can exactly. I ask you? Um, for 
I, 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 I've always thought, you know, if I was a multi-millionaire and I had a chance to go into space, that is something I would love to do. I'm, I'm a scuba diver. I understand the appeal of the oceans. It'd be wonderful to go and see the Titanic wreck. It's not something I would take a risk to in my life to see. I'm not that interested. That looks to me like a risky thing to do. Uh, $250,000 is the cost of this trip. Um, what is the appeal of, of going in a tiny little submersible, you know, um, uh, 12 and a half thousand feet below the ocean waves in, in dangerous, difficult conditions. You were obviously a submarine commander. Um, you know, this this is most people's idea of their worst nightmare, trapped in somewhere small, deep beneath the ocean, unable to escape. What What is the appeal for some people? Well, I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm not sure. I, I think that the chances are um, quite reduced, in my opinion, because a the depth i'm sorry if you get hear it but it's raining like cats and dogs here not probably can um, hear you just fine. but, but uh, i i i feel that they if they can find it that's the first thing is mm. finding it and locating it whether it's on the surface having been taken away by currents bearing in mind it's two days since it went down so it could be anywhere yeah hopefully the the maritime air will find it or and surface ships that are out there but but our, if it, let's say they do find it, I think the chances of of recovering it are extremely remote yeah, in the time. I think I think available. because of the noise of the rain, you couldn't you didn't hear my question. Then. But I'm asking you, what is the appeal for for people to go down in a submarine when it's most people's oh, I see. Mo right. well, idea of uh, hell? Well, as a submariner who spent many many uh, years and uh, days underneath um, the water, um, you you. <laughs> I, I suppose I'm accustomed to it, but it, it never worried me. You rely on the people around you and you rely on your machine. Um, it, yes, you have problems and emergencies and issues, and I've had plenty of those. But the reality is, is that it's all about the people and all the people down there, the Frenchman and and um, Amish yeah. um, and, the, uh, and the CEO of the current things, they should be relatively calm yeah. and they will be doing everything they can to try and get that that submarine to the surface, so I, I think they'll be quite calm. They've got time at the moment, but I think the only real hope for them is that they can get up of their own accord. Indeed. Um, well, let's just keep everything crossed. Rear Admiral Roger Lane, not former NATO commander of submarines, former uh, very, uh, former flag officer of submarines UK as part of the Royal Navy. So appreciate your time and your expertise. Thank you very much indeed.